May ended with actual restoration of the bridge. Here, Master Bridge Wright Tim Andrews kicks a replacement plank into place on a bottom cord. Gin pole hanging out to lift out and remove a section of the west side bottom cord to swing it over to the catwalk. Rock compromised section of the west side cord. Removing an earlier repair, a steel fish plate meant to compensate for a section lost to rot beneath the arch as it passed over the cord at the northern end. Unfortunate bandsaw removal of one of the eight embedded truss rods at the portals. They proved to be heavily intertwined with rebar and impossible to free with jackhammer attempts to do so. Reconfiguring the north abutment after excavation. North corner of the original well-laid stonework where the back wall returned into the wing wall. This was found well below the current grade. Interior of existing north abutment wall. Work on the bridge proceeds simultaneously. Unacceptable bottom cord planks to be replaced. Removal in process. The date on the plank is included in the hope that in future incursions, replacement pieces are not confused with original fabric. This is common in historic preservation efforts. Cutting up old front wall with a diamond saw. Front wall partially removed. Another perspective of cut up pieces. Old abutment front wall exposed after excavation. The I-beam assembly is presumed to be left from a prior repair to the wooden bridge when it was pushed over by river high water by five feet. Oblique view gives a better feel for components.
North abutment demolition, front wall exposed. North abutment demolition, front wall removed. The rock wall abutment facade is being supported by a series of rods and jacks during excavation. Meanwhile, work continues on the bridge. Remaining section of bolster beam and lower cord plank, which was separated four days prior from east side. Stirrup used for supporting floor beams, circa 1860. Same stirrup with more recent ones. A jeep jack being used to extract one of the rods that augment the wind braces in the removed timber buttresses at both portals, so the rod can be returned to service. Recovered stitch bolts. Wrought iron stitch bolts gather and unify the eight layers of plank in the bottom cords. The most common maker's mark, Milton Best Refined, found on many of the truss rods was also discovered on three stitch bolts after removal from bottom cords as they were being cleaned for reuse. They have already begun to go back into use. Laminated beams are still in common use today for extra strength and durability. They are called glue lamps because instead of with bolts, their constituent planks are held together with strong modern glues. Their advantage, as here, is that unit strength in planks is higher than in thick timbers, and they don't have the shear grain weakness of thick timbers. Without bolts or glue, the planks would slide along each other like leaf springs. Fifth ironwork maker's mark found on the stitch bolts, differing from the other four. It's an Australian Victoria's Best. Four stitch bolts showing maker's marks. As previously mentioned, these bolts are being put back into service, fastening the lower cords together. West side mid-span top planks recently added to the bottom cord. The next two photos show why. South portal excavation to remove old abutment and replace it with a new abutment for the new bridge height. South end showing the separation between the abutment and original bridge, about four to five feet. Closer view of old abutment wall. South abutment rock facade boundary wall. Red lines mark cuts to be made with a circular saw to define edge of cement sand slurry volume to be cast in preparation for micropiles to be drilled through cured slurry.
surviving south abutment wall marked for interior saw cuts. Original north abutment wall with marks for saw cuts. Notice the opposite side of the wall, far left side of photo, is the facade surface being supported for protection. Original north abutment wall with red marks for interior saw cuts. Diamond saws from which to choose. Diamonds are embedded in the periphery. Diamond saw cutting stone flush to make way for the micro piles to be driven for new abutments. Meanwhile, bridge cord work continues the very end of the staggered step solid section cords where they join the plank lamina. The plank-like layer in the foreground is the bottommost step. Removed staggered cord section in work yard. Note that these timbers have spiral grain at angle to the timber axis. Normally a defect, its use here is clearly intentional. They chose to do this because Douglas fir has an Achilles heel despite all its strengths. It is notoriously prone to splitting. This means the staggered steps joining the solid cords to the plank sections would hold a weakness at each step. Each of these steps would have held a shear plane hyper prone to splitting. Use of a seeming defect to advantage was an almost genius move. Spiral grain meant the grain was not in line with the steps. It ran at angles, that is, no shear plane. And pulling it off in four 64-foot pieces on this switchback mountain road was not an easy task. The people we are following knew their material and knew how to use it to advantage. They were very good at what they did. The crush seen in what had been at the bottom end of this truss rod at the panel point node 2. Both over-tightening and distortion of the geometry would suggest why core truss rod interfaces are notoriously damage prone. North end abutment excavation. Measuring for proper depth. Later to be filled in with concrete and micro piles. North End Abutment Excavation. Photo shows the result of the diamond saw cutting of the old rock wall abutment. South End Old Abutment Wall ready for cutting with a large diamond edge saw blade. The inside faces of the original North Abutment stonework cut away to allow the driving of new abutment micro piles. Twenty-six foot planks for replacement of lower cord lamina. Many of the 1862 planks took advantage of the trim. Most sawmills, then and now, provide pieces a few inches longer than what is ordered and were emplaced in the 24 foot 4 inch range. Our trim was by 2 inches, hence we received 26 footers in today's delivery. The plank pictured is one being milled to the exact thickness as the one it is replacing.
The Makita 12 and a quarter inch planer, model KP312, is precision engineered for even cutting and ideal for professional timber framers and carpenters. Bridgewright Tim Andrews hand chisels precision channels into the replacement plank for the truss shoes to fit into on the bottom cord, west side. Holes marked in red on inside faces of the original abutment wall on north end portal. Steel dowels that will protrude into the cement and sand slurry will be epoxied into the holes. Sawing the inside faces of the original abutment wall. Holes marked in red on inside faces of the original north abutment wall. Steel dowels that will eventually protrude into the cement and sand slurry will be epoxied into the holes. Note drill used on left third of photo. Forge and homemade anvil used for heating and straightening the reusable stitch bolts for use in the lower cords. Bridgewright Will Truax straightening stitch bolts for reuse in lower cords. Newly reconstructed west lower cord section using some original and some new cord planks. Separating lower cord lamina with wedges for repair or removal. Further progress with reconstructing lower cords prior to installing stitch bolts. West side reconstructed cords with stitch bolts installed. <laughs> <laughs>